Friends, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. In the name of Jesus Christ, who loves us, grace and peace be to you, and welcome to this service of worship at First Presbyterian Church of Gardner. Welcome those who are worshiping here in the sanctuary with us, those who might be viewing us on our live stream or the recorded version of this service. Welcome especially visitors and guests we have with us. It's always good to have visitors and guests worshiping with us and offering our praise and our lives in service to Jesus Christ our Lord. Today in worship we are continuing a Easter season series. As you all know, Easter is more than just one day. It is Uh, several weeks between Easter and the day of Pentecost, which will be June 5th. And during this Easter season, we are continuing to navigate change. Christ's resurrection changes the world, it changes us, and so we have to navigate that change. Even though it is good change, it is not always easy. And so today we consider how Christ's love changes us from being closed to open, especially in regards to new things God might be calling us to do. One of the new pieces of worship we will have with us uh, today as part of that is the presence of another pastor and worship leader, my dear friend and colleague, the Reverend Kate Fiedler. As I explained in our end-of-the-week email on Friday, Kate contacted me a week or so ago to let me know she'd be in town this Sunday and willing to help in any way she could, willing to crash this party. Uh, And so I said, sure, why don't you come and be with us, worship with us, lead a prayer if you feel so called. She herself decided to wear a robe as well, so uh, that choice was hers. We are delighted that Kate is with us. That note of friendship and encouragement and offer of help that Kate shared was also truly an echo of so many who have been praying and encouraging me uh, in these recent weeks, especially during my hospital stay uh, the week of May 9th. Um, I just want to thank you for that and assure you that I am doing much better than I was Um, and uh, in learning what God is saying to me also, uh, new and different habits I need to uh, take on uh, for that. So thank you for continuing to pray, encourage me, keep me accountable, and for us to be church together. Thank you also to all those who stepped up in my absence, especially our session and our worship leaders last Sunday, the Reverend Decky Hall, Rennie Edwards, our liturgist, who had a lot new thrown on her plate uh, and did an admirable job. Uh, We thank Emma, also who continues to fill in for Gloria as she recovers from her knee surgery. Uh, Deb McHenry uh, was our uh, song leader. And then we also need to thank Stephanie Morgan Taylor, who is with us in worship today. And we'll say a little bit more about Stephanie in just a bit. But... Um, As I indicated in the spire, while Jesus Christ is the head of the church, um, the church administrator is not far behind and definitely ahead of the pastor um, when it comes right down to it. So thank you to all for collaborating and connecting and being the church. I have a few other announcements I just want to bring your attention to rather briefly. As I do that, I would invite you to take uh, the attendance pads and to sign them and pass them along for others to sign. Stephanie would also appreciate that because one of her duties is making sure we can see who has been worshiping with us each week. Um, So I invite you to do that as I share a couple of things. Some of these announcements are in the bulletin. Um, At least one, though, uh, is um, uh, something uh, to uh, be also mindful of. Uh, First, I just want to point out a couple of excursions that are coming up. Um, One is today, uh, a celebration with Sandy Lee, our church's 2022 recipient of the Presbytery of New Hope's Outstanding Older Adult Award, as voted on by the session. Sandy and other recipients from other churches in our area will be celebrated at a service at 3 o'clock p.m. in Rocky Mount, at First Presbyterian Rocky Mount. 
Um, and anybody who has time uh, to go to this uh, event um, can meet in the church parking lot at 1.45 today so that we could carpool together. We should return to Garner sometime between 4.30 and 5, depending um, on how long-winded some of the speakers are um, uh, and uh, whether or not they have goodies that we want to sample or not after the uh, celebration. But if you would like to come and be a part of that, you can meet us in the parking lot at 1.45 p.m. Also, see the event uh, going to the Bird Sanctuary on Saturday, June 24th. Ken Somerville will be happy to share more details about that if you are interested. Another way to embrace our earth care commitment. Ken, right there. It's a Friday. I'm sorry. I had the calendar wrong. Friday, June 24th. Friday, June 24th. Thank you for that correction. Tonight, I also ask your prayers uh, for the session as they meet for their regular monthly meeting. Please pray for this group of leaders as they do the work of the church. There will be items related to our search for a new director of music ministry, uh, uh, information and plans for our vacation Bible school, and also uh, notes and updates about improving, continuing to improve our buildings and grounds, including some continued attention to our air conditioning needs. That will all that and more will all be part of our work tonight, and we do ask for your prayers for us as we discern and plan and do things in response to the calling of Jesus Christ. Someone else who has been called here by Jesus Christ is uh, Stephanie, and we are sharing a monthly series of ministry spotlights. And so her number came up uh, for this month, and we are so delighted that she and Harry are with us in worship today. This is the first time Harry's been in the sanctuary with other people, Um, uh, so this is quite a thrill for him as well. And it's quite a thrill to be able to uh, welcome Helen Lasada to uh, the mic um, so that she can share and celebrate Stephanie a little bit. So, Helen. Five years ago, or almost six years ago, this was a different place. We had come off of a long-term ministry, the retirement of our pastor and our office administrator. And we as a congregation were really, really busy trying to figure out who we are and what we believed and what our mission should be to the community and people around us. Part of that was we had an, uh, uh, an interim minister and she had a daughter who was willing to come and help fill in for the office administrator position. I was on the deacons and I was about halfway through my term and it was decided that I should be looking looking at, we were doing a general house cleaning and looking at everything in those days. And so Henry got the, the lucky job of dealing with the online services of our congregation, and I got the newsletter. So, dutifully, I called up and made arrangements to meet this new young lady and uh, see what the two of us could come up with. Well, did I luck out, because not only was she pleasant and friendly, it was obvious that she was a helper. One of those people that you can just say, you know, I wonder what I could, and she says, well, how about this? She has this gift in her presence and in her whole attitude of wanting to serve. And so this was her gift to us, and I was smart enough to take advantage of it because I found out she had newsletter experience. So I didn't have to really do anything. Now, this is what you get every week. Every month, rather. See this beautiful 12 pages of colorful, educational, inspirational, celebrational information. And probably more than I can even come up with is that. I get to see this in its basic stages, which means 
this is, this is really Stephanie's baby. This is not my baby. What I do is dot the I's, cross the T's, and put it in the mail. Stephanie hands me something that looks like this, which is a rough copy, and we do our thing together, and then she puts it on the, the copier and prints out, and by the time I get it, the first fold is already there on this masterpiece, and I just take it home and do my thing. Now, think about what goes into this. She does, every month it's different. The colors are different. The pictures are different. Whatever is in there is different. So Stephanie has been doing that for this every month. But that's just one little section of what she does. She does everything else. Now we know we have a pastor and everybody knows the pastor is the boss, but we also really know who runs the church. And she handles all of that. She orders, she prints you bulletins you have in your pockets or sitting with you today, they're her creation. We have a funeral that comes up unexpectedly. Well, what do you need, 50 or 60 more copies? Oh sure, we'll put one together, bum, 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 and you got it. That's Stephanie. We, she, we pay her for 34, 35 hours a week. I, let me tell you. There has to be more. If this is one little iota of what she does, she's working more than 35 hours. So I think we should say thank you. And if you will join me in a hand of applause, please, for Stephanie. And we need to thank her for Harry, too. Thank you very much. Wrangling me is like a 50 hour a week uh, thing, and she does that too. So uh, very well said, Helen. Thank you, Stephanie, for this shared ministry and being a part of that and, and letting yourself be a little embarrassed this morning um, uh, by it. Friends, in this spirit of celebration and thanksgiving, let us continue to worship God as we are led in our call to worship this morning by our liturgist, Lucy Paradise. Please join me in the responsive call to worship as I read the light print and you follow with the dark print. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. We shall love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, and might. Keep these words in your heart and share this love of God in worship, service, and praise. Will you please stand as you're able and join as we sing our opening hymn, number 22, God of the Sparrow.
Please, friends, you may be seated. Dear church, we have been called to follow Christ and obey his commandment that we love one another even as God has loved us. It sounds simple, but we know it is oh so hard. So let us confess now how we have closed ourselves off from God's love, and yet how also that love continues to find us and to open our lives and hearts to the newness of mercy and grace. Let's join in the prayer of confession you find printed in your bulletin, and then let us also share in silent prayer. With one heart and voice, let us pray. Loving God, We have not loved you or each other with our whole hearts. We have been distracted by too many things and failed to hear and heed your voice. Forgive us, we pray. Lead us toward a new wholeness that we may be alert to your presence and filled with your joy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord, in this holy silence of confession, may we still hear your voice of mercy and forgiveness. Amen. Dear church, hear this good news. Christ loved us so much that he laid down his life for us, breaking into our closed huddles of fear and isolation. And Christ loves us still, even today, reaching out with open arms, calling us his disciples, yes, but also his friends. So may we believe this good news. May we turn around and open our arms also in response, ready to be embraced by the love of Christ and ready to share that forgiveness as well. For in Christ we are forgiven. Alleluia and amen. As forgiven people, we can share mercy with one another and peace. And so we will do that now with this call and response. Then I invite you to stand as you are able and greet as you are comfortable your neighbors with the peace of Christ. When you hear the tune for the Gloria Patri, you can kind of return to where you are. We will still sing the Gloria Patri uh, standing up. Friends, the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Let us share peace with one another.
friends, you may be seated. We come now to our conversation with the young and the young at heart. Um, and Noah, if you want to join up with me, I think you're going to help me have this conversation a little bit. And we're going we're to kind of, we're going to stand, stand if that's okay. You okay with standing? I need to stretch my legs a little bit. If you need to sit, that's okay. Um, I, Noah, I wanted to ask you, um, have you ever been or heard an argument before? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We pretty much all have probably heard arguments or been part of arguments, right? Um, what are some of the things... Um, that we might argue about um, sometimes that are silly you know like it doesn't really matter we might argue like I'm thinking of something sometimes in our house we have an argument about what movie we're gonna watch for movie night right that's kind of a silly kind of argument do you ever have arguments like that that you can think yeah, of like generally speaking like arguments that weren't on the board and things okay right because like yeah. I mostly don't have arguments cause, okay like, So you just go with the flow. That's, a, that's kind of a nice like, way to be. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. If they ask me like, yeah. what I want to do, I'll just say, like, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So, so when you have an argument, it's because there's something really important to you. Yeah. It's not necessarily just kind of a surface level one like that. It's really, really important to you. Well, the reason I'm bringing that up is because in today's scripture, which we're going to hear in just a minute, um, there is a big argument at the beginning of it. Um, and it's a really important, it may not seem like an important argument to us, um, because it happened so many years ago, but at the time it was a really important argument um, about what people should or shouldn't have to do to be able to join the church. When the church was brand new, there were kind of all these things that people were trying to figure out what they should and shouldn't do and how to do that. It was a pretty big argument because, because some things uh, uh, sounded like they were changing for folks, right? And some folks were just how do we do that? As we've talked already some over the last couple of weeks, change is good, change is needed, but change is hard. And so these folks in the church had an argument, and they were fighting over it. Now, the easiest thing we want to do is probably say, oh, no, you shouldn't have an argument, right? You should never have an argument. It's church. We should always be nice and pleasant to each other and all that sort of thing. And that's true. We, we should try to do that. The sermon's going to mention that. But I want us also to think about um, the fact that just because we might be arguing about something um, doesn't necessarily make it a bad thing, right? Because it can be something that's really important to us. Um, and so we need to be able to learn how to share our differences of opinion um, in ways where we can do that honestly and lovingly and not in kind of the arguments where we start calling people names and doing that kind of stuff. Like that's, that's a bad kind of argument. But it doesn't mean that we can't kind of figure some things out and wrestle with some things together and have some hard conversations, right? Does that make sense? Um, tell me one more thing, one more question. If the kind of, you know, when you've tried to kind of raise your opinion, you said, you know, these things that you have to kind of talk about that mean a lot to you, um, what are some of the, the skills that you need to be able to find a really good answer yeah. to the issue? What do you think? One, like, assess the situation. Like, assess, yeah, yeah. Like you want to, like, see what's happening, yeah. what's the problem. Is. Right. Mm -hmm. Two, you want to have, it's like a sales pitch. You want to, like, do it. Like, <laughs> right. You want to, like, right. make your opinion. Yeah, yeah. Like, really well. Yeah, like, yeah, make, yeah. Like, make your opinion, right. like, the most desirable option. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if all else fails, just be really, really, really pushy. Just be really, really, really pushy. Well, those are, so, at least two of those are really good, I think, for when we're having those kind of disagreements and things in church or maybe with what we should be doing or not be doing. I think um, to assess the situation, I think that's really good. I think we see some of that happening in the scripture this morning. Um, I think, yeah, figure out how to speak and how to speak in a really winning and loving sort of way. Yeah. The other thing, though, that you didn't mention, but maybe it's kind of implied in the speaking part, is that you want to be talking in a way so that others can listen, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, and so that's kind of the key, too, is, is how do we listen? How do we listen? We can do difficult things, I think, if we listen with each other. So listen for that, too, in the sermon as that kind of goes on. Um, and let me know if it didn't make sense, and I'll talk about it with you some more or with anyone else um, about that. But thank you for being up with me today. I'm so glad you don't get into silly arguments. I need to learn that lesson myself. <laughs>
pretty good. Let's have a prayer. God of grace, we thank you that you give us difficult things to do, and even when they're not easy, you teach us to work through them. So give us uh, eyes to see what's going on, uh, hearts to figure out how to speak with love, and ears to listen to what you might be saying to us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please join me for a prayer of illumination. Lord, help us listen for your word in the noise, for your hope in the chaos, for your call in our lives. Amen. First reading from Acts chapter 15, verses 1 through 3, 6 through 11. Then certain individuals came down from Judea and were teaching the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. And after Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and debate with them, Paul and Barnabas and some of the others were appointed to go up to Jerusalem to discuss this question with the apostles and the elders. The apostles and the elders met together to consider this matter. After there had been much debate, Peter stood up and said to them, <clears throat> My brothers, you know that in the early days God made a choice among you, that I should be the one through whom the Gentiles would hear the message of the good news and become believers. And God, who knows the human heart, testified to them by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did to us. And in cleansing their hearts by faith, he has made no distinction between them and us. Now, therefore, why are you putting God to the test by placing on the neck of the disciples a yoke that neither our ancestors nor we have been able to bear? On the contrary, we believe that we will be saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus, just as they will. Picking up in verse 12. The whole assembly kept silence. And listened to Barnabas and Paul as they told of all the signs and wonders that God had done through them among the Gentiles. After they finished speaking, Jesus replied, my brother James replied, excuse me, Jesus' brother James replied, My brothers, listen to me. Simon has related how God first looked favorably on the Gentiles to take from among them a people for his name. This agrees with the words of the prophets, as it is written, After this I will return and I will rebuild the dwelling of David, which has fallen. From its ruins I will rebuild it and I will set it up so that all other peoples may seek the Lord, even all the Gentiles over whom my name has been called. Thus says the Lord, who has been making these things known from long ago. Therefore, I have reached the decision that we should not trouble those Gentiles who are turning to God, but we should write to them to abstain only from things polluted by idols and from fornication and from whatever has been strangled from and blood. For in every city, for generations past, Moses has had those who proclaim him, for he has been read aloud every Sabbath in the synagogues. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us, melt us, mold us, fill us, use us, O Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Amen. So it may be the oldest game there is. And maybe the most fun to play also. It's pageantry and 
passion, the sense of belonging it gives are all deeply satisfying. It's a game that can be all-consuming as well. The only real purpose is to win, to beat and vanquish the opponent, assert your team's righteousness in any way you can, whether by lobbying arguments from afar or simply closing your ears, closing yourself off to the other side. It can be and is played everywhere and by anyone in our politics, our communities, our families, even the church. The game of us versus them is nothing if not temptingly accessible. In fact, the book of Acts shows us that from its very beginnings, the church faced the temptation to play such a game. As it dealt with very real challenges and disagreements that arose when Jews and non-Jewish Gentiles shared a belief in Jesus as God's Messiah, as the fullness of God's grace made flesh for one and for all. And chief among those debates was the Jewish practice of circumcision, the mark of the covenant given to Abraham and passed down for generations, although, as Peter said, a burden that was often too heavy even for the Jewish people to bear. But still, here in Acts 15, the game is afoot. Between those who believe Gentiles should also be circumcised versus those who do not feel the practice is essential for the church. It's the game of those who articulate new ways versus those who worry about the loss of tradition that has been around for as long as anyone can remember. It's the game of wrestling with the possibility of a new mission effort versus those who are, well, concerned about the extra strain on the building and the budget. It's those who want to change the colors in the sanctuary and those who remember the ones who came up with the colors in the first place and are not sure they would be all for it. It's the game of figuring out how to embrace and include as the grace of God demands while also emphasizing the responsibility and accountability that faithfulness as Christ's disciples also requires. And so no wonder the writer of Acts 15 describes it as a source of no small dissension or debate. Which may be a fancy way of saying that there was lots of shouting and squabbling and perhaps quite a few pot shots lobbed back and forth. Maybe even one of these, I can't hear you, la 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 la. as two sides became ever more entrenched. But then something really interesting happens. The early church remembers it is the church, the body of Christ, where no one member can say, I don't need you. They remember they are church. They remember they are called not to play games, but to follow a way of love. They remember that what they hold in common, a way for Gentiles to be included in the covenant of God's grace, 
is much more significant than the different opinions they have on how that inclusion is accomplished. Certainly thanks to Peter and then to Paul and Silas, they remember that ultimately the salvation of anyone, no matter race, gender, ethnicity, creed, is not really up to them. But rather, this is the work of God and God's grace through Christ, which shows no partiality, which time and time again widens the circle, throws arms wide open, ceases to keep us closed off from one another, while also calling us to use whatever newfound freedom we have in ways that are responsible, just, and true. The church remembers that it is church, and so remembers that in church, there is no us versus them. Even though there are difficult issues, even though there can be conflict, sometimes silly, sometimes serious, church, we are not called to be right. We are not called to win, to vanquish, or to do away with our so-called opponents. We are called to do what that council at Jerusalem did. We are called to a love that listens. A love which hears and rejoices at the stories like those Paul and Silas tell about new things God is doing in their ministry. We're called to a love which keeps silent It makes space for joy, but also for concern and worry and lament that needs to be lifted up. That offers room and time for wrestling with difficult things and many tears to be shed. We are called to a love that James voices, which balances new possibilities with the persistent promises of God that have been shared since the beginning in words of paupers and prophets, sages and fools, mothers and fathers, those whose collective wisdom still helps guide us in finding the common ground we and our world need. That is the sort of thing the church needs to be playing at. Not a game of us versus them, but simply us. One holy body, different, messy, diverse, yet knit together by God's grace. Not arrogant enough to think we always have it right, but willing to wrestle, discern, listen, and then serve in ways that show God's grace. That is for us and for all. Now, that does not abdicate our role in calling out things that stand opposed to this grace. We are not both siding every issue here. Things like violence, whether it is in markets in Buffalo or churches in California or anywhere else. Conspiracy theories and false accusations, racism and sexism, misogyny, greed, cruel indifference are things disciples of Jesus Christ should stand against wholeheartedly and unreservedly. What this council of the church in Jerusalem teaches us, friends, What love that listens calls us towards is a posture towards the world and towards each other that leads with open ears, open hearts, that refuses to play games that label a fellow child of God as an enemy or closes us off from new possibilities or keeps us silent in the face of injustice.
So church, may that be our witness. In a world that knows so well the divisiveness of violence, hate, and anger. May that be our response to the call Christ continues to place upon his church. To remember, to love, to listen, to say, here we are. Here we are. Send us not to play games, but to do the work of the church so that all may know the fullness of God's grace. To God be the glory as we do so. Amen. I invite you now to once again stand as you are able as we join in our hymn of reflection, number 69, Here I Am, Lord.
beloved of God, as we remain standing, let us join together in one voice with our affirmation of faith and the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. It is indeed a delight to be invited to join you all and to see my pastor buddy Ben at work. I am grateful for your warm and gracious welcome. Each week, we take time to offer our prayers and to tune our hearts to God's heart. We carry our delight and our despair with us, offering to God our hopes and fears. And today, particularly, we pause to listen, to really listen to the voice of our Creator. We trust that God knows the prayers that are deep within our hearts and go unspoken. So let us unite in prayer. Gracious God, we gather to glorify your name and give thanks for all you have done, all you are doing, and all you will do. We find ourselves like the early church, seeking Jesus and hoping to walk in the light. May we see the light of Christ shine through the faces of those familiar and unfamiliar. Remind us that each of us is created in your divine image, holy and unique. Lead us to walk in the way of Jesus. Guide us to listen to your voice above all others. Hold us in your hand as we navigate the days ahead. You are the creator of the daffodil and the dogwood, the robin and the red ant, and we are amazed by your creation. As flowers, bushes, and trees continue to bud and bloom, we are reminded of your glory and beauty in the world. You have entrusted the gifts of air, sea, sky, and landscapes to our care and protection. So guide us to nurture and preserve the earth and all the life it sustains with passion and purpose. Our livelihood is bound up with the welfare of all you created. May we treat the natural world with the care and respect it deserves. Gracious God, we know your peace and we need your peace. So we pray for those stifled by anxiety, distress, and illness. We pray for those who are struggling with violence in Afghanistan, in Ukraine, in Buffalo, in Winston-Salem, and in Goshen, Indiana. We pray for healing for neighbors struggling with grief. We pray for communities living in fear and frustration, caught up in the systems of oppression and conflict. Grant patience to all those who are working extra hours in education, in health care, on the police force, supporting those who are experiencing homelessness, aiding the incarcerated, and encouraging immigrants in our nation. We pray for families that are struggling with distant relationships due to estrangement, addiction, abuse, illness, and fatigue. Center us in your peace, we pray. 
And God of mercy, guide us in your love. Guide us to listen well, for you know the human heart. Lead us in your word and light. Show us the way to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. We pray in the confidence that Jesus taught us, saying together one, in one voice the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now we join together in singing hymn number 554. 754, just kidding. 754, help us accept each other even when we make mistakes. Thank you. I invite us to remain standing as we are able and join in the litany of thanksgiving and then singing the doxology. You can find words to the doxology as well as our musical response to the benediction on the laminated cards in the pew in front of you. Friends, the Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Let us give thanks for God's presence with us today as we sing thanks to God. Friends, you have come this day, come to worship, come to celebrate, come to see friends, come to sing and to pray, come to listen for what God is saying to us. So now go, go to be the body of Christ in the world, go remembering what we are called to do as Christ church, go to love and to listen. And as we go, may we live our hope and not our fear. 
And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted upon you and give you peace. Today, this week, and always. Alleluia and amen. Let us now sing our response, Go Now in Peace. Amen.